kind of clinical protocol for psilocybin um, work with people with depression. It's like, it's basically um, two therapists sitting in a room with someone lying on a bed with the headphones on, eye shades on, listening to a playlist. And you have some preparation therapy and the whole session. And then you have some integration therapy afterwards. And really, yeah, it's about kind of um, just support. It's a really nice human context. It's very different to normal psychiatric services where there's a kind of expert uh, professional that's very neutral and very blank and very boundary and kind of separate. You know, it's much more like, it's much more human. Um, and obviously it's a really long session because it's like six hours with someone on a psilocybin session. So it's quite different. But the um, the first study had these amazing results. Like, and I do think there's there's an element that we have to be a little bit careful with how amazing the results are. Because in a study like that, there's a lot of expectation. And people are all taking part in the study and they want it to work. And they, you know, there's that, that sense as well of the kind of wanting to please the researchers, even, even unconsciously, you know. So I think the results have been really amazing. But yeah. And actually the second study that we did was very interesting in that we compared antidepressant medication to high dose psilocybin and actually they both came out as very effective so it wasn't like psilocybin was a million miles better than antidepressant medication it was a bit better but not significantly better so they both they both were effective which I think is important to remember as well with all the kind of hype about psychedelics and excitement that you know um yeah we can get a bit over enthusiastic. That's interesting. Actually, Robin wrote uh, a bit of a kind of corollary to that. Did you see the Robin's article he wrote for Chakruna or something like that? I'm sure, no, it was actually on his own, on their own Imperial like, website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is really interesting because although it, psilocybin came out a little bit better, but not significantly better than the escitalopram, mm. it, it was only on the specific measure. They had to choose a the depression yeah. scale of which there are many to, to kind of base their mind, main findings on. But it turns out the other measure, uh, I'm not sure which one it was, the HAMD or the quid or something. HAMD yeah. turns out it was significantly better. Yeah. So it was kind of just a bit of a gamble, really. You know, it's like yeah. it's like going to the bookies and go, we're gonna put we have to put your money on one horse. And there's all yeah. these other horses in the race. And they all kind of win, but that horse just kind of had a kind of neck and neck. So yeah. On the other measures, it did come out better, but the way that it was it was kind of forced to report it mm. was that it was as good as, mm. if not, yeah. you know, which is quite kind of curious way in which they have this extremely cautious way of reporting clinical trials. Yes, but it certainly works. It would seem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, what was really interesting about the the design of that study is that. Everybody, um, whether they were in the escitalopram, so the SSRI group or the psilocybin group, everybody went through the same therapy protocol. So I think one of the reasons why um, both groups did really well is that they weren't this, the SSRI group weren't just given a packet of pills. So in our healthcare system, if you go to your GP, you'll usually get like a 10 minute consultation. And if you're suffering from depression, they'll usually give you SSRIs without much support it's like here's a packet of pills if you're lucky you get some therapy alongside it but it's probably cbt and you know there are limitations with that for many people so um the way we in our study the way ssris were given was everybody went through the same therapy protocol so the ssri group had the same number of sessions and everything else and they also had these um like music meditation sessions because the psilocybin session is like a six-hour music meditation so we compared the, the psilocybin group had psilocybin plus six hours of music meditation. The SSRI group had one milligram psilocybin and a six hour music meditation session. And what we found is that both groups, the high dose psilocybin groups and the low dose psilocybin groups had really profound experiences in these music, music meditations. So I think in a way, my um, conclusion after all of it was that, um, yes, yeah, psilocybin is amazing and it's an amazing tool for opening people up, but actually, um, Presence, care, music, support, respect, the time to really sit with people, all of those things allowed people to have, people had some amazing, uh, deep, deep responses to the visualizations that we did. Um, and some people that were in the low dose genuinely thought they'd had high, high dose psilocybin. 
So that was it, interesting to me. That is kind of brilliant. I mean, it's, so it's not really testing psilocybin against, I can't actually say it, a scattered problem. It's one of those things, isn't it, where they, they chose psilocybin to be the kind of psychedelic poster drug because nobody could pronounce it. Now, I can, I can have no problem pronouncing it. I just can't pronounce your standard psychiatric drugs. Uh, Escetilopram, whatever it is. Anyway, so that this SSRI wasn't, it wasn't really a kind of how SSRIs are used. So it's really just a kind of, is it as good as psilocybin psychedelic assisted psychotherapy but without the psychedelic? which is really interesting. And, and I guess the thing is with psychedelics, they are, as the word implies, mind manifesting, you know. So mm. you can, if you create this lovely environment and encourage people to go internally, it will just kind of ramp up the volume on, on that kind of inner inner journey. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's super interesting stuff. I mean, didn't they, and then in the the, the original, well, not the original, the, the Hopkins studies with the psilocybin mystical experience, they still found people having mystical experiences in the control condition, where they were just listening to evocative music with the eye shades on. I mean, people just don't really do that, you know, and, and just, yeah, maybe just doing that for four to six hours yeah. can really help, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's not just the SSRIs in this experiment, is it, either? It's no. like a whole package. 